This video is going to be about entering data that you've collected in the field or in the lab. And the very first thing to do before you've even started collecting data, ideally, is to come up with a plan for what the data structure is going to look like that you want to store your data in that follows the kinds of tidy data principles that we talked about last time. And if you can do this before you collect data, what this will allow you to do is set up your data sheets so that they follow the same structure as the kind of format that you want to enter them into on the computer. And that will both save you a lot of time uh, with data entry and also make it easier to line up your raw data sheets with your entered data later if there's any confusion that you need to go back and check on. Once you've developed a plan for what your data structure is going to look like, the question then is how do we take the information that's on a data sheet and put it into the computer? And there are a variety of different options for doing this. What we're going to focus on today is using spreadsheets because they're the most common and when used effectively uh, can be used to defend your data entry to prevent bad data uh, from ever ending up in your data set in the first place. But there are a variety of other options. You can enter data directly into a text file uh, by separating each of the values uh, by commas. You can also enter them into a database, something like Microsoft Access, if you want a graphical database, or SQLite, uh, which we may learn about later in the semester. And some of that data entry can be handled through forms, and that could be web forms, uh, that go directly into a database are forms in things like Microsoft Access or Microsoft Excel uh, that allow you to enter data in effective ways. We're not going to talk about most of those. We're going to focus on entering data into spreadsheets. We're going to use Microsoft Excel, but most of the uh, approaches and the kinds of tools that we're going to learn uh, will work in LibreOffice. It will work in Google Sheets uh, and a variety of other uh, spreadsheet sort of approaches. Now I will offer the one caveat uh, that sometimes spreadsheets can do strange things to data. Uh, here's a paper from a few years ago in genome biology uh, that talks about the fact that errors in gene names are widespread because when certain gene names are entered into Excel they get converted into dates that's kind of concerning. Uh, and uh, this excellently titled article uh, by my colleague Kara Wu, uh, Abandon All Hope, Ye Who Enter Dates in Excel. So there are some things that we need to be careful of, but we're going to learn how to handle those uh, in today's lesson. So what we're going to do to start is talk about uh, something called quality assurance, which is basically a set of tools designed to allow us to stop bad data from ever getting into a spreadsheet in the first place. And that's important because it's much easier to catch errors in data if we never allow them to be entered in the first place. So let's go ahead uh, and set up an example uh, with some uh, data table that has information on uh, the date of sampling, the plot that we're looking at, the species ID of the individual that gets caught, and then how much it weighs or its mass. And so we'll have a header row here uh, that includes uh, a date column. I'll use tab to move over to the next cell. We'll then have a plot column. We're then going to have a species ID column, and I'm going to use uh, the camel case sort of strategy that we talked about last time where we capitalize uh, the start of words and so I'm going to call this species ID. So this is now we've got two words but no space separating them uh, and then we'll have mass here at the end. Now before we start actually entering data we're going to set up some quality assurance rules. So let's start <clears throat> Uh, with an example from the plots column. So to set up a validation rule, we select the set of cells, most of the time the column, that we want to set a validation rule for. 
We then come up here uh, to the ribbon and select data and go over to this data tools box where we're then going to select data validation. And in data validation, we can then choose the kind of data that can be entered. And so for plots in this study, there are a total of 24 plots and they're numbered from one to 24. So these are whole numbers or integers. So we're only going to allow those to be entered. And then we can restrict the range of numbers that can be entered. So plots start at one and go up to 24. And so our minimum number will be one and our maximum number would be 24. And so that'll set the rule for what can be entered. We can also provide some information to the user. This can be particularly handy if you have uh, technicians or assistants entering data for you. And so this will be information that shows up to tell the user what to enter. And so we could type down in this message box, valid plot numbers are between 1 and 24. And we can also click on this error alert tab to control what happens if the user enters a number that is not valid. And so this box is checked, so it will show an alert. Uh, right now, it blocks the data from being entered. If you just wanted to provide a warning, you could click on this uh, radio button here. And then we can provide information to help the user figure out what went wrong. And so we could say uh, plot IDs can only be numbers 1 to 24. And now we can click OK to create this data validation rule. The first thing we'll see is if we click on a cell and plot to start to enter some new data, we get this nice message here that tells us what the valid numbers are. So valid plot numbers are between 1 and 24. That's our message. If we enter valid data here, everything works fine. So we can enter plot number one, we can enter plot number two, we can enter plot number 24, and everything works fine. But if we accidentally try to enter some incorrect data, let's say we start to enter plot 22 and we accidentally hit the two key one extra time, if we hit enter, we're going to get an error. And it's going to usefully tell us that plot IDs can only be numbers. 1 to 24, and it'll give us the option to either kind of stop and give up or retry. And I'm going to click on retry, and then we can come in here and, either, and edit this to be the correct value and hit enter, uh, and now it will go in. Similarly, we can limit the range of decimal numbers as well as whole numbers, so masses. Uh, at least in this study, are decimals. And so uh, we can select the column. Again, go up to the Data tab, the Data Tools box, and click on Data Validation. And now under Allow, instead of clicking on Whole Number, we can click on Decimal. And the masses have to be positive, so we could set a minimum value of zero and the largest mammal that will fit in one of the small metal boxes called Sherman traps used in this study is uh, a little less than 300 grams. So we'll go ahead and set 300 grams as a maximum. And data entry will work the same way here, except it allows decimals. The other thing that we can do is restrict data entry to a list of possible values. And this is particularly useful for uh, things like species names or species IDs. So we'll go ahead and click on the species ID column. We'll again go to the data tab, the data tools box, and the data validation button. And now this time we can select the value list here. What that lets us do is provide a list of species IDs that are valid. And so in this case, we might have uh, D-I-M-E for Dipodomys meriami, as well as D-I-O-R, D-I-S-P, 
P-E-P-E -P -E and P-E-M-E. -E. This is just some of the species in this study. And then we can click OK. And now, uh, if we try to enter data, uh, we'll see that it starts to auto-complete for us and give us a set of options, which is handy. Uh, if we enter a valid uh, species ID, everything works great. If we enter an invalid species ID, we'll get an error like before, which we can then fix. And another handy feature is that when we click on a cell, we get this drop-down menu. And so instead of having to enter the value ourselves, we can just click on this arrow and select the species that we want to enter, thus avoiding any sort of potential for typos of any kind uh, and saving us a bunch of, of typing on the keyboard. So that's the basic of quality assurance. Uh, the other scary thing uh, about entering data, in particular into spreadsheets that I mentioned at the beginning, uh, was the issues with dates. And so we can see an example of that here if we go to type something into the date column. So let's try and use that nice, uh, good standard format that I mentioned last time. Uh, 2020, so the year, followed by the two-digit month followed by the two-digit day. We're doing a great job. We're going to create some nice tidy data. And I hit enter. And Excel says, you know, I think that's a date. I want to format it this way. And so it changes it to 2 slash 26 slash 2020. And if we're lucky when we export this, it would look like this. If we're unlucky, it might look like something else entirely. And so we want to avoid that. And so the way that we do that is by changing the type of data that these cells are defined as uh, so that Excel doesn't try to change it for us. And we can do that by clicking on the column, going up to the Home tab on the ribbon, and now over here under the Number uh, box, we can click the down arrow, and instead of using general, where Excel will try to figure out what it is and maybe make changes to it, we can scroll down to the bottom and select text. And what that will do is it will force Excel to just treat it like text, like characters, and so it won't change anything about what we enter. And so now if I enter 2020 02, 26, we'll see we keep that value and when we uh, save this file and go to upload it into R or some other programming language, it will look like this and we'll be able to work with it in the ways that we want to. So that's the basic idea behind data entry. We want to start by having a plan so that ideally our data sheets match our data entry format, which is a nice tidy data format and will make it easy to work with our data later. We would then want to apply quality assurance rules to make sure that invalid data are never entered into our data set in the first place. And then finally, we want to protect against uh, data being accidentally converted into different date formats uh, by changing date columns uh, to text as the type so that we preserve the format of the data that we enter.